Okay, as we feel our way to an understanding of blockchain, what does it mean for sustainable journalism? Well, to give us an insight into that is our next speaker, co-founder and head of journalism operations at the Civil Media Company. Please welcome Daniel Seberg. All right, how's everybody doing? Hanging in there? Blockchain, totally understand it at this point? Okay. Um, my name is Daniel Seberg. I am a co-founder and head of journalism operations, also leading our ecosystem growth at Civil. Um, and I'm really excited to, to be here today to talk to you about some very near-term applications for blockchain and journalism. Just a little bit about me, uh, so you have some idea of who's standing up here in front of you. Um, I have spent a good amount of time working in the media and for tech companies. Um, I, and I spent a lot of time in academia, probably more than I should have. Um, managed to pay off my student loans some time ago. But I did do a, a graduate degree in journalism with a focus in technology. This is back in the late 1990s. So I feel like I've had a, a first-hand view of the evolution of journalism and technology, that, that intersection, for, for a long time now. Um, I was one of the, the folks who helped to create the Google News Lab, um, which is Google's effort to foster innovation and storytelling within publishers and broadcasters all over the world. Um, and I did a tour at a number of different newsrooms, including CNN, CNN.com, ABC, CBS. Um, that's not me on the cover of details, in case you're wondering. Um, I did contribute there as a writer. Um, I started as a reporter at the Vancouver Sun, originally from Canada. Um, this goes back almost more than 20 years ago now. Um, and I wrote a book called The Digital Diet. So I have a, a strong appreciation for technology, for how it fits into our lives. Um, I came to try to understand what blockchain is about almost by accident. It was uh, last summer. Um, I was still working at Google in New York uh, for the News Lab. And I came across one line in the morning media newsletter from Politico that said, civil is trying to figure out the future of blockchain and journalism. And it was a Neiman Labs article, and I thought, what is this? I've got to learn more. So I reached out to our CEO. His name is Matthew Isles, and we set up coffee. And again, this is back in the summer. He was still just building the foundation for what civil is even today and, and hopefully will be in the future. And I don't think we set good parameters for what this meeting was. I, I think he thought I was there to possibly invest in civil. Um, maybe I, I was hoping that maybe there was a role for me to play in, in what they were building and growing because it sounded so interesting. And as he went through this presentation on his laptop, I slowly started to understand some of the possibilities of what's involved. But I wanted to know more. I couldn't let it go. So I reached out to him. We continued conversations. And I left Google at the end of last year and joined Civil. This is our team. We're a small company. I'm really proud to represent these 12 other individuals. These are some of the most talented, bright people I've ever had the opportunity to work with. I'm humbled to be here in front of you today. We're a distributed team. Some of these folks are in New York, California. We have an engineer in Warsaw. Um, we're slowly growing our team, trying to grow at the right rate as any startup would. Um, but these are folks who are passionate about the future of journalism. These, these, these people could have gone to work for lots of other tech companies, maybe even in the blockchain space, but they found that journalism was their calling, and they thought this was the most important place for them to be, and I respect that. So just a little bit about Civil and our foundation and how we're getting started, and then I'll get into some of the mechanics and what we're planning to launch in spring. So I think somebody here asked about what's coming in the, in the future. Uh, this is the near future. Um, we are backed by Consensus, which is the largest Ethereum studio or accelerator in the world. Um, they have an office in Bushwick in Brooklyn. Our office, our co-working space is in Gowanus. Um, they are founded by, among others, Joe Lubin, who is one of the co-founders of Ethereum. If you're not familiar with Ethereum yet, I encourage you to check it out. As it compares to something like Bitcoin, which people think of as primarily a cryptocurrency or a store of value, Ethereum is about much more. It's about building distributed apps or dApps that tap into the power of blockchain technology. Um, there are more than 700 employees that are now part of Consensus, um, and we received $5 million US in funding from them last year. Of that, we used $1 million to help create our first fleet newsrooms, and I'll get into what those are in just a little bit. So I think 
Most of us can agree that the future of journalism feels threatened for lots of different reasons. We could get into billionaire owners who pull their funding at the last minute and leave journalists in their wake. We see headlines like this of journalists getting laid off, particularly in the U.S., but we, we know it's happening around the world. There seems to be this cry for help. What can be done? Are the ad models ever going to work? Is video the answer? What is social media going to do for us? What about subscriptions? Lots of questions, not necessarily a lot of answers. We hope that we are one of those. I think we can also agree that the public is losing some trust in what the media is up to, what journalism is doing. How can we try to reset that conversation, that experience, that exchange? What is the value that we put on quality journalism? And believe me, I hear skeptics all the time. You're asking people to pay for journalism, for content. What, what, what do you expect people to do? This, this isn't happening. We don't see that this is happening. Well, we're trying to create the right platform, the right marketplace for that to thrive. We think that a decentralized marketplace for journalism built on blockchain technology is where this can happen. This is an ad-free platform where we want and expect quality journalism to thrive. We are also going to be launching a civil token, which I'll get to in a little bit, and I'll talk about the utility purpose of a civil token and what it enables people to do. And, and for a second, put aside what you know of cryptocurrency and paying for something with a civil token. And I want to encourage you to think about things like self-governance and governance on the platform and getting involved from a grassroots standpoint. What we're trying to create is a much more direct relationship between newsrooms and audience. And that means taking out advertisers. It means taking out some of the platforms we know today. I know this feels radical. I know this feels different. I know it feels uncertain. Believe me, I was with you about six months ago, not knowing a lot about blockchain, wondering about where this was going to be headed, and I'm a convert. And I, and I hope that you'll join us on this, on this mission. So those 12 folks that you saw up there, they have been hustling. They have been busy. Part of the reason I'm the only one here from Civil is they're all at their desks doing all kinds of work all over the world trying to figure this out. And both launching our Civil token and our Civil marketplace, our Civil platform simultaneously. And we think that there are aspects of blockchain that can really help to change the equation between journalists and audience opening up trust and transparency in a way that we haven't possibly seen before, building in credibility indicators so that you can see, was this reporter on the ground? Where did this data come from? Can it be verified in some way that we haven't seen before? And we think that there is an opportunity for circumventing things like censorship or governments that try to shut down journalists who try to tell stories in parts of the world where they feel threatened. There are a lot of different aspects of this that we think are helpful to the future of journalism. Now, I mentioned our first fleet fund. So we had a million dollars that we allocated for newsrooms to apply to join Civil. Now, one of the things that we've learned is to become a decentralized company, we have to start out by being a little bit centralized. It's a chicken and egg problem. We needed to have content for people to experience when they came to Civil at launch. And in order to do that, we needed to instantiate some newsrooms. You could almost think that we're a startup trying to help create other startups, which is essentially what we're doing. And these are our first five newsrooms that we have announced. And they are meant to, we called out during our first fleet applications that we wanted to see applicants from local, policy, investigative, and we also added international in there as a fourth pillar because we see that those are huge opportunities in journalism. There is a void in that space today. There are newsrooms shutting down that focus on investigative reporting or local reporting. We don't think that's because people don't care. We think that because the business models that have tried to support those over the years have been broken. So Block Club Chicago is an example. They're a group of journalists based in Chicago. They are the remnants of what was known as DNA Info, which was a local news site based in Chicago that was shut down by Joe Ricketts, who's a billionaire. He shut it down at the end of last year. And with that, eight years of archives were gone 
as they shut it down, both Chicago and New York and elsewhere. This was of alarming concern for those journalists to know that this content that they had created was gone, that it could never be found again. It did get brought back to the internet, by the way, but only because Joe Ricketts received such terrible PR for doing what he did. So those journalists got together, they found out a little bit about us and what we're up to. We met with them, they came to us in New York. They received some funding some, from us, some grant money to help them get started, to pay their salaries essentially. They've also received some civil tokens which give them an ownership stake in our platform. And they created a Kickstarter campaign. We were a little nervous when they did. We didn't know how people would respond. They asked for about $25,000 over 30 days. They have since gone on to exceed $150,000 in funding in Chicago. They're now the largest journalism Kickstarter project in American history. This is exciting to us. It makes us think that maybe we're onto something here. Um, and these other newsrooms are in a similar vein. Populous, started by a woman named Maria Bastios. She's based in California. Formerly of the New Yorker. Lots of experience in journalism. She's hired about 10 journalists now to help build this newsroom out. She sees it as kind of an alt-weekly for the California set. Sludge, this is all about uncovering dark money in government. These are some of the most talented investigative reporters I've come across, and they're committed to their mission. Cannabis Wire, this is started by some graduates of the Tao Center at the Journalism School in Columbia. And these women are excited about covering this, what is becoming a multi-billion dollar industry globally, and thinking about all of the ramifications from society to regulations. And then Hmm Daily, which doesn't roll off the tongue initially, but was started by someone named Tom Skoka, who's a former editor at Gawker. And he sees this as a bit of a pop culture meets stuff that you didn't know but maybe should know. And there's an overlap here with policy and all kinds of stuff. And this is just the first sampling of what we expect to launch with about 15 newsrooms coming in the spring. But to underpin all of this is something that we believe very strongly in, and that is our civil constitution. And much like the US Constitution, this is meant to be an organic, amendable document that will foundationally spell to the audience what civil stands for. This is not reinventing the wheel. We are incorporating the best of journalism ethics, guidelines, and principles from all over the world. This is a document that was, in some ways, created initially by civil, but we have had all of those newsrooms participate. We've had legal teams look at it. Soon, very soon, maybe within the next week or two, we're gonna be opening it up to the public to say, what do you think we should do? What should be in here? What are we missing? We're a US-based company, we're trying to be global. There are probably things we haven't added in here and need to. But it will be ultimately a document that is managed, amended by the community. And I can't reinforce that enough. Civil as a company, we are not trying to insert ourselves into any of these newsrooms. They have pure editorial independence. They will not be controlled in any way. They will be able to set up their own business models within the civil platform to start to monetize from day one. And I'll get into those in just a second. But we as the civil entity are kind of like, if you can think of us as Apple OS, we're trying to launch the platform, the foundation for what is quality journalism. And then others can come and build apps and newsrooms and services on top of us. You know, we could be a little bit like Intel inside. You might see the civil icon or button on other news sites in the future to indicate trust or verification or some ways of monetizing. And we're also creating the Civil Journalism Council, which is intended to be a group of individuals across academia, the industry. Um, we want to make this a global group that will have oversight over what happens on the platform. If there's a violation of the Constitution, if a piece of content violates the Constitution or a newsroom violates the Constitution, there will be procedures in place, thanks to the civil token, that will allow the community to determine should those bad actors be allowed on the platform or not. There are governing mechanics, which I don't have time to get into today, but if you go to our website and our soon to be released updated white paper, you can see all of this in great detail. This is an article that was written by Nikki Wolf, who's a, a writer at The Guardian US. The headline was, What Could Blockchain Do for Journalism? We got really excited by this article, this Medium post, because we think it really spells out a lot of what we're talking about. And yes, as we heard from the previous speaker, that blockchain is a rather nascent technology in some ways, but the genesis of, of it has been around for years. 
And only now is it starting to come, become more visible and part of the mainstream. But really at its core is this idea of peer-to-peer -peer transactions. It is a distributed ledger. It is open. It is transparent. And we think this adds a lot to what we're talking about with journalism. We're working with the Ethereum ERC-20 protocol for people who are more technically into this or advanced, and I'd be happy to talk more about what that means. Um, and if you want to think about sort of the difference between, say, Ethereum and Bitcoin, if Bitcoin is a bit like gold, retaining its value in that way, then Ethereum is a bit like oil. There are different functions for it, different ways to think about how it can apply, and it enables something called smart contracts, which is basically confirming transactions from one person to another. So what does blockchain unlock, and what does the civil token unlock if people were to purchase it or start a newsroom on civil? Well, there'll be a newsroom registry. You can think of this as a whitelist of newsrooms that have access to our CMS, which we're currently building, and all of the opportunities to monetize within our platform. So we're calling that our business center. In other words, a newsroom could set up shop on civil. You'd come across it in a way that you might through Medium. We'll have a web experience. But within that CMS and within that business center, a newsroom can say, we're going to make this article, article subscription. We're going to set up a membership drive for something we'd like to do in the future. There are lots of different ways that we're going to allow each individual newsroom or publisher to customize the way that they think about monetization and business tools. No one size fits all, totally up to them. They can decide this in whatever way they see fit. And we're building this CMS at the same time. So I will tell you, we are one of, if not the only, mainstream consumer blockchain company that is trying to both simultaneously launch a token and a platform. And I'm, it is hard. And, but the folks that I introduced you to at the beginning are committed to this, and we've set a spring launch date. We are also trying to build in things like credibility indicators, which I mentioned in the beginning. This is just one way that we want to try to open up that relationship between journalist and audience. Start to humanize it a bit. Who are these people? Maybe open up some empathy. You know, we look at content today as this, just this faceless, humanless experience often on the internet, which I think is a shame. As somebody who spent almost 20 years as a journalist and as a reporter, and I'm sure many of you are either one or know some, these are people who work hard for their craft. And getting to know them in some way may help people to understand where does their money go? What are they paying for exactly? And I think there's a real opportunity here to do that meaningfully. So as I mentioned, we are coming soon, spring 2018. You can check out our website, joincivil.com, to learn more about us. And just to be clear, you don't have to own civil tokens to be involved. We think that most of the audience will be above what we're calling the waterline. These are people who are going to consume the content, read it, share it. Newsrooms might make some content free, and we understand that. Not everybody's going to want to get deeply involved, a bit like Wikipedia. We all see Wikipedia today. We know it works. We trust it, most of it. But we don't really have to get so deeply involved in the editing and verification of information, but we've come to trust it. We hope that civil gets to that point. And you can, of course, go deeper below the waterline to either purchase a civil token and be involved in the governance of platforms or your own newsroom. And we want to make this open to developers to create all kinds of exciting tools and services that they can sell within the civil marketplace. We'll never get between that relationship between a journalist or a newsroom and an audience. Maybe in the future, our business model consists of things like taking some part of those transactions between developers and newsrooms or selling their wares as we try to figure this out. So as I mentioned, we are launching our platform and our civil token. We're hoping that folks will join us. We're looking for strategic purchasers as we launch our civil token. We want this to be a global entity. Um, we are making inroads here in Europe, but we're also looking in Southeast Asia. We've heard from people in Africa. We've heard from people all over the world who are excited about this. I have to stop here. I want to encourage you to reach out to us. Um, that's my email. That other email up there goes to all of us at Civil. Um, I will be available tomorrow morning for breakfast. Uh, coffee and pastries are on me. Um, it's just around the corner. If you'd like to continue this conversation, I'd be more than happy to. Um, please, if you, if you need to RSVP for this, check out our Twitter handle, 
and you can find out more details. I'm Daniel Seberg, and thank you very much for listening. Will you take a question? Seriously? Sure. Great. Yeah. So uh, if you have a question, uh, do raise your hand. And I guess a burning one while yeah. everyone gets their uh, courage together. Um, you mentioned that there's uh, the possibility of buying civil tokens to become involved. You want to talk to people who are strategic partners. But for smaller newsrooms, and without giving away what may be a business-sensitive cost, what's the kind of order of magnitude of cost of becoming involved in civil? I mean, is it a few thousand? Is it, is it, is it tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? What's the threshold? So the newsrooms that have come to us through our first fleet fund put together a budget that was basically to pay their journalists. And as part of this first fleet grant, we were able to meet them and match those salaries in cash or fiat. And then we also compensated them, some of them depending on their risk tolerance, some of them wanted more cash, some of them were okay with more civil tokens. And so we made it up to them. We said, would you prefer more cash or would you prefer more civil tokens? And so really what we're trying to do is pay the salaries of the journalists to just help them try to get that that sustainability underway. So for existing uh, people that already have newsrooms, people yeah. here who are publishers, yeah. they presumably will be buying civil tokens to become involved. So is there a, what's the cost of entry, if you like, for yeah. people that are coming in on that side? So we, are, we would love to talk to legacy publishers. We're in, I would love to actually make an announcement of a number that we are, that we are talking to or, or close to working with. We're not here to, uh, you know, we, we want to find the right way to work with all kinds of partners. It's not about a, a dollar value or an amount. We, we would love for strategic purchasers to come in and, and own civil tokens because they care about the mission of journalism. It's less about, for us, it's, it's less about the value of it and more about the, the actual opportunity for the future of journalism. Makes sense. So. If we have any more questions, do raise your hand and we'll rush a microphone to you. And uh, yes, one just here. Here it comes. Uh, maybe a comment. Okay. Uh, Gagik, I'm from Public, which is a distributed media blockchain powered platform which is working and it doesn't cost anything to authors or publishers to come on. And uh, well, probably in the US, <laughs> you, you miss the chance to see that uh, uh, there are some platforms like uh, Stimit, mm -hmm. Medium, and so on and so on. There are yep. many yep. who are trying to uh, br uh, come to this place. And uh, I believe that together we are stronger and uh, we need to build this place for the authors and the publishers yeah. and advertisers as well. Yeah, and I, I would just, should just be clear, yeah. in the future, anybody can apply yeah. to join as a newsroom. There's no cost involved. We're not charging anybody to come in. Um, it's, it's about a news, if, if you wanted to start a newsroom on civil after we launch, you'd be more than happy to. Um, we'd be, we'd love to see you. I mean, we're okay. trying to make this as open as possible. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks.